Welcome to this week's virtual Teen Jesus Sunday School. This summer, we're going to do a Kingdom Quest Carnival. We're going to be starting a series called Looking for a Leader. God chose leaders all the time in the Bible to lead his people and teach them how to live. And God's still looking for leaders today, people to tell others about Jesus and his love. So for the next few weeks, we're going to use some carnival games to learn our Bible lessons. Are you ready to play, Gordy? You betcha! I love carnival games! All right. So to win the prize for this game, you need to use this ball to knock down the block with a target on it. That's easy! Here I go! Hang on, Gordy. You need to pay before you can play. Pay? But I don't have any money with me. That's okay. You can use this. It's a Jesus ticket. It's a good reminder that Jesus has already paid the price for you. Here I go! Oh! I did it! Yeah! Great job, Gordy. Here's the target block that you knocked down. Hey, it says Leader Samuel. I wonder what that means. I think we'll find out in a minute. In the meantime, here is your prize. Hey, wait a minute. This prize already has my name on it. It says Property of Gordy. It belongs to me, and I didn't even know it. Are you surprised, Gordy? God has a surprise for all of us like that. I am surprised, but what do you mean God has a prize for us? God's surprise is that we belong to him. Some of us don't even know it or remember it, but it's true. Now, wait a minute. I don't see any tags saying property of God on me. Well, how about this? Whoa! You mean I'm God's property? You sure are. Does that mean God is going to make me do stuff? No, God doesn't force us to do anything. He loves us and helps us want to do the things he would like us to do. Because we are God's property does not mean God forces us to be good. But I don't understand how I ended up being belonging to God. Well, who made you? God. That's one reason why you belong to God, but there's an even more important reason. What that? Well, God paid for you. He bought you with a great price, his son Jesus. Jesus gave his life to die on the cross for your sins. You were baptized, which is when God put his property of God tag on you. So if you trust Jesus as your savior, it means you belong to God. If I'm God's property, does that mean God can do whatever he wants with me? Well, yes, but God is not going to force you to do those things, right? He is just going to remind you that you belong to him and you can dedicate yourself to him. Well, how do I do that? Well, today's Bible event is about Hannah and Samuel. See if you can learn from these Bible characters what it means to dedicate your life to the Lord. Hannah's story is written in the Bible in the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel. Let's hear about how Hannah dedicated her son Samuel to the Lord. Hannah lived with her husband Elkanah. Elkanah loved her very much, but as was the custom back then, he had another wife as well. Her name was Penina, and she was very mean to Hannah, and Hannah was sad. You see, Penina had several children, and Hannah didn't have any. It seemed that the Lord would not bless her with children. For a woman in that time, to not have a child was almost disgraceful. She was so unhappy and sad. Though Elkanah loved Hannah and honored her, she was still sad. Penina took every opportunity to remind her that she had children and Hannah did not. Elkanah and Hannah loved the Lord. Once a year, they went to take their offering and worship at God's temple in Shiloh. Hannah would look forward to these events because there, in the temple, she felt close to God. She would remember how God had been so faithful to the people and heard their cries for help. He had delivered them from slavery in Egypt and brought them through the wilderness. He had given them a new and wonderful land. Hannah knew the Lord would hear her prayers. Hannah bowed down before the Lord and opened her heart to him. She told him of her disappointment in not having a child. She told the Lord that if he would only give her a son, she would give her son back to him to serve the Lord the rest of his life. She would dedicate her son to the Lord's service. Hannah prayed so fervently, so hard, not out loud, but in her heart. Her lips were moving, but there was no sound. Then she heard the voice of Eli, the priest. He said, Woman, be gone with you. This is not a place for drunkenness. What, she said, I'm not drunk or filled with wine. I'm praying before the Lord. 
I'm so distressed. I have told the Lord my trouble. Oh, said Eli the priest, then go in peace. May the Lord give you what you have asked. Hannah felt peace over her heart. She knew the Lord had answered her prayer. Her heart skipped as they returned home. Before another year passed, God gave Hannah a baby boy. She knew what she would call him. His name would mean God hears. His name was Samuel. When Samuel was three years old, just old enough to help in the tabernacle, Hannah packed his things in a neat bundle and took Samuel to Shiloh and brought him to Eli the priest. She reminded him of the time she had come to the tabernacle to pray. Hannah said, I prayed for this child. Now that the Lord has answered my prayer, I have brought Samuel to dedicate him to the Lord. As long as he lives, may he belong to the Lord and serve him. I shall visit him, but he does not belong to me. He belongs to the Lord. Eli knew that God's blessing was on the boy and upon Hannah. He promised to take wonderful care of Samuel and to teach him to serve God. Hannah could visit Samuel, and she knew that he would grow up happy in his service to God. Each year, Hannah visited Samuel. She would bring him a new coat, and she would be surprised at how much taller he had grown. When she went back home, she knew God had answered her prayer in other ways. The Lord gave her five more children as a special blessing of his goodness. So, why are we interested in Hannah's story today? Because we, too, are like her son, Samuel. Maybe we haven't grown up serving God in a tabernacle or church, but we can be dedicated to the Lord to serve him right where we are. You, like Samuel, can know that your life does not belong to you or even to your parents. Our lives belong to God. When you dedicate yourself to God, it means you're saying to him, God, I know I belong to you. I promise to do my very best to live like you want me to live. Can I dedicate myself to God even if I work in a carnival booth? Even if you work in a carnival booth. Even when I have to work with a goofy partner? Yes, even if you have to work with a goofy... Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> you have to worry about working with a great partner. Some of us have to worry about working with a goofy partner. Bye, boys and girls! Bye, goofy partner! Not so fast, Gordy. Lead us in a prayer before you go, please. How, but what do you want me to say? How about asking God to help us remember that our lives belong to Him? It even says that in 1 Corinthians 6. You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Pray about that. Okay. Dear God, I'm glad.